Ladies and gentlemen, let's go racing here at Knoxville. Only the best go three of It is show time at Williams Grove Speedway. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, here at Eldora Speedway, it's show time. Have you got a more impressive, often imitated, never duplicated, the greatest show on dirt, the world. It's time to sit back, relax, and enjoy, because ladies and gentlemen, it's showtime! Set to do battle for 30 laps, the green flag is waving! Hello again, it is Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit. Talking sprint car racing, our favorite time of the week, and we are so glad that you have joined us. Steve Post and alongside my co-host, Aaron Evernham. How are you? I'm good. Yourself? Fantastic. Fantastic. Little trip to upstate New York, little cooler air. Mm. I had to put on a sweatshirt one night. Oh, Boy, we ain't, I miss that. <laughs> we ain't wearing sweatshirts around North Carolina these days. Oh my God. Yeah, it has been ridiculous. We landed in Concord on Sunday night. You, you're in upstate New York. It's like you're walking to the plane. It's like so good. Landed in Concord and it's like, boom. <laughs> <laughs> like, where did it all go? So, um, uh, the good news is on the NASCAR tour, we're going to Daytona. Oh, for God's sake. We're going to talk this. about Melton. Melton, yeah, it's all good. So, all the good. Finger Lakes were good? Finger Lakes were awesome. I love the Finger Lakes. I do region. too. I went, um, I had a spectacular hike. Um, the place we stayed at had a wine happy hour. Oh, this is not a new place, right? This is, no, a, this is the same place we've been yeah, staying at yeah. forever. The wine happy hour. Oh, man. And the one night, Two and a half hours later, the wine happy hour ended. <laughs> happy hours. Uh, happy hours. Uh, literally, it was it was funny because all the MRN people and literally standing there at the wine happy hour and two couples that nothing to do with racing, kids going to Cornell, and we just had the most spectacular visit. And thank God they had dinner reservations or we'd <laughs> still be there. So, um, you know, uh, just great fun. I love upstate New York. Me too. Love upstate New York. It is so cool. It really, truly is. So. Uh, fun stuff, that's for sure. And uh, James McFadden and uh, Danny Varon from Upstate New York are our guests here on the show. Going to be cool to talk to Danny after that All Star win. Now, uh, on s on Saturday morning, I'm oogling and googling, and I see that crash at Jackson Oof. where you know someone just goes out of the ballpark, yeah. and I'm like, man. And so I put something on our Facebook and our Twitter, like, are we crashing? It just seems like this year we've had a bunch Nasty of Nasty crashes. Knoxville had a lot. This yes, year. Knoxville had a lot this year. Um, I don't believe this is a reaction to my post. Um, I do take, uh, I'm, uh, but Scruffy, about four hours later, weighed in. Um, and, and, and if it was, fine. But, it, but I just, I, I, I don't think Scruffy's scrolling our Facebook and Twitter account, okay? He might be a big Postman fan. Though. No, he's not. No, he. last time <laughs> we did an interview, he said he didn't realize he was talking to Jesus in the interview. So <laughs> I um, do remember that. That's right. Yes, exactly. Um, but, well, then I, he's following but I, Jesus. But I do, no, but I do take a lot. I was like, well, if Scruffy's thinking about it, then I must not be. Because I, I started it with, is it just yeah. me? And if Scruffy's thinking about it, then it's not just me. Yeah, yeah no, and it's pretty good company. And and he talked about and, and it's on our our Facebook group and I retweeted it and you can find Bobby Allen's post and uh, there it's it's on the screen now as well. Yeah. Um. A lot of it is just the the on the edge that this tire seems to put everybody. Yeah. And so it's fascinating and we're we're not here as Wing Nation and we generally you know we 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 try to stick to 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 uh, to, to let's talk to the winners and the let's talk stuff. about the personalities the happy stuff. And and this is not what this segment of the show is, but um, I'm so glad that Bobby Allen has addressed this because when Bobby Allen addresses stuff, people are reading it. Yes. Well, and honestly, you know, this is a conversation that Ray and I have had a, a lot watching the races because we watch a lot on Dirt Vision and Flow. And during Knoxville, Ray will be like, oh, you're having so-and-so on. Ask him about what's going on. And obviously, I don't feel like this is always the time or place. Yeah. But it's something that we're all noticing. We, we've got, and this is a little, a little inside baseball yeah. here for Wing Nation. We've got some ideas for some things where maybe we have yeah. a platform for these discussions as we look to next year and beyond. We're just not geared up on Tuesdays to, to, to say, let's roll up our sleeves and talk to this person, that person, that person about this topic. Yeah, And so it's something that needs to be talked about. And 
I just was so happy to see Bobby Allen talking about yeah. it because when Bobby Allen brings it up, People you can't say it, yeah. you can't say, "Well, that's you." I, I can't. Say. Danny Dietrich brings it up, and it might they might have the exact same belief. But if Danny Dietrich brings it up, 50% of the people are going to say he just needs to shut up and drive. Yeah. Yeah. When Bobby Allen brings it up, yeah. there ain't anybody going to say, when Bobby Allen brings it up, even if you hadn't thought about it and you might not even agree with it, you still got to say, well, it's Bobby freaking Allen. Yeah. And I love that Bobby Allen has stepped up on this. I think there's, I, I think Bobby Allen discussing this is a great starting point for conversations about this. And I, I know a lot of people in the sport. I know, you know, guys like Mike Hess, they, they're smart people and they're passionate people and they care about this sport and they love this sport. Yeah. So they see it more than we do. Yeah. And I am fairly confident a lot of discussions are going yeah. on. And obviously all the safety equipment is, is doing its job. Oh my gosh, yes. But I don't think we need to be putting it to the test we don't like need, we are. We don't need to make everyone a crash test dummy yeah, every week. Exactly. You know what I mean? I mean, so, some of those, the, that wreck at Knoxville where the whole rear end flew out of the car. Yeah. I don't think in my entire time in sprint cars I ever saw yeah. the entire driveline rear end fly right. out or and you know, the, some of the down tubes, the way the cages look. And, 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 and I mean, and these the, the other side of this thing is that we, and when I say we, I have nothing to do with we. So they, the crew chiefs and the drivers and the engine builders and all of the parts manufacturers, these cars are just hauling butt. I yeah. mean, the speed is phenomenal. So that we, you're adding extra speed and crashing is what you're adding. And that's mm -hmm. a bad combination. So... Uh, we are we are we are loving that uh, Bobby Allen has did this. The, the one guy we would always talk to is Darren Pittman, and 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 Darren. When we get to where we can have these conversations, Darren's going to be a resource to have these conversations yep. with. But I just think that I'm really grateful that Bobby Allen has jumped up and said, "Look, I've seen this, and I think we need to start yeah. talking about it." And again, when Bobby Allen talks, people listen, yeah, uh, as they should. And um, except for one guy on Facebook or Twitter that said, nah, Bobby's not right. Oh, okay. Jack from Florida with nine followers. Uh, we, <laughs> you, you, you sit over there and, and do your thing. But no, I'm, I we're grateful for that for sure. Let's get into our Heifer Racing product hot topics. I am telling you, since our trips to Jackson, I don't like watching Jackson on Dirt no, Vision because either. I want to be there. Yeah. There is something just special about that place. Yeah. And watching it on Dirt Vision pains me. I mean, <laughs> it just does. Because you know uh, there's just great, and it's the people, the great people yeah. we met at Jackson in our years going up there. And then you see them on Twitter, and they're all still there. And it's like, who's missing? Aaron and I are missing. So, <laughs> um, But it was the Agco Jackson Nationals. James McFadden, we're going to talk to James. He is rolling at yep. this point. It is so good to see him and that Roth team just perform as they are. Uh, picked up wins five and six on the season, 10th and 11th for his career on the prelim nights, Thursday and Friday. And Saturday night, the battle with Carson Macedo and Brad Sweet was, it was spectacular. It was. Those last few laps were amazing. It's like, you go here, I'm going here. No, you go here, I'm going here. No, you go here, and I'm going here. And again, we're doing this. At the speeds they're yeah. going. Yeah, and, and that track was pretty locked that down. That track was locked down. That track was locked down, and then Big Cat said, well, not so much. <laughs> and uh, we do have uh, on our TV show, Carson Macedo is our guest on our TV show, and he really breaks that battle down. Yeah. You know, like when Brad went around the outside of him, he was gone before Carson even heard him. A lot well, and I here. loved his interview after the race. He basically was like, I, did, I really didn't know what to do. Like, it was yeah. very honest, candid uh, yeah. interview. And his, and his interview with Ashley and I, yeah. we already recorded it. It's on our show. was spectacular breaking yeah. it down. He is, he, is, he is a good explainer of things. And so what a race. The Agco Jackson Nationals. What a race. I mean, you know, gosh, I'm telling you. And my understanding is that the um the uh, penalty box was in good good hands. Yeah. I good. heard that my hear. my sources say the penalty box was well stocked up. They didn't run out of any inventory. Well, we uh, weren't but, there. So, but they did yeah. push the inventory to good levels. You know, <laughs> I mean, they stress tested the inventory very well. Uh All Stars returned, and of course they have a little time off after Knoxville. Uh, after their race in Knoxville with the 360 Nationals, the the, yeah. the Nationals, uh, they returned and so did Sunshine. Tyler Courtney went up to Dundee and picked up the win. Uh, his other finishes, he had a good weekend, second and fourth. So 
uh, up at up at Dundee, Old Sunshine. Uh, got around that racetrack, and I love I love Dundee. I love going up mm-hmm. there. I wish I wish the uh, NASCAR Arca Dundee schedule were so close by and yet so far away. Yeah. And we stay in Ithaca, which is like I ain't. I ain't driving from Dundee, New York to Ithaca no. at 12.30 in the morning. You know, <laughs> there's too many bears and deers and muskrats and everything out out there. So, you know, that I don't want to dance with. <laughs> um, so, um, Saturday night, Danny Varon. We're going to talk to Danny on the program. Zeb Wise won Sunday at Sealands Grove. The dream race, what a race this was. Devin Borden took it off from Lance Dewey's at Port Royal on the last lap. The second one, Brent Marks. Seventh win of the season. Quiet season for Brent. Yeah. He kind of, at this point last year, he had more wins. Um, maybe he's getting his arms around it. And I found this. I, I got up this morning, and Brian Liska had sent a note about this, and I love this. Fremont Speedway, the 72nd annual Sandusky County Fair. And for years and years and years, the racetrack sat idle, and it does for the balance of the fair. But about six or seven mm-hmm. years ago, and I may be wrong, they decided to showcase the 305 Sprint cars on opening night of the fair. All they've done is increase the attendance of opening night and the fair by bonker percentages because <laughs> everyone wants to see these 305s race. And I don't know if it's the case now, but they, it used to be they'd have to unload and move their stuff in the infield. It, it was difficult. The 305 teams, and, and we know 305 teams are not always geared up to be yeah. able to do that, but everyone rolls up their sleeve and does it. I don't know what the, what the, the layout of it is now, if they still have to do that, but it is great that the 72nd annual Sandusky County Fair kicks off with a full house for the 305 sprint cars. And we don't talk about 305s and we love 305 sprint cars, but we just, there's only so many hours in the show, so many minutes in the show. But Paul Weaver, 77th career win. He is now the all-time win leader. And Paul could, could, with with, with a good arm, can throw a softball from his house to hit the racetrack. Uh, he is a local boy, a uh, local racer, local veteran racer, and 77th career win. So to kick off the fair and have a historic win like that, I just think that's really yeah. cool. Really cool. And I love that the 305 racers get a little little chance under the under the shade of the 410s to have their night, and it's fair night, and they had a and huge And they have fair break. food. Oh, they, yes. And that's where, <laughs> uh, that's where Brian Smith introduced me to the walking taco. Too. Oh. Love a walking taco. Where I'll have tonight at Millbridge, probably, for my <laughs> snack. Uh, Hefner Racing Products, easy to shop the entire line at Hefner Racing Products, hrp.com. It's hrp.com right from your desktop or your phone. And remember to use promo code MRN at checkout for a 10% discount on your first order. hrpracing.com. That's www.hrpracing.com. Let's step away when we come back. J-Mac did a couple shoeys this week. We're going to talk to him about that and a whole lot more. The Outlaws are headed back to the Pacific Northwest. Join us for three action-packed nights of racing August 31st, September 1st, and 2nd at Skagit Speedway when the World of Outlaw NOS Energy Drink Sprint Cars return for the Sage Fruit Skagit Nationals. Kickoff for the Sage Fruit Skagit Nationals begins Wednesday, August 30th with a pre-race party, live band, Sage Fruit Apple giveaways, and more. Then catch Donnie Shots and the rest of the World of Outlaws as they take on Washington's best sprint car drivers Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights. Details at SkagitSpeedway.com. The National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum's newest exhibit will be our track tribute to Williams Grove Speedway inside the museum's main floor from April 3rd through October 2nd this year. You'll learn about the beginning of Williams Grove Speedway and the evolution of sprint car racing on the East Coast through eight of the iconic big cars and sprint cars that made up the history of Mechanic Birds Pennsylvania's Williams Grove Speedway. Plus, you'll see videos of historic national open sprint car races and other racing events that put Williams Grove on the map. That's the track tribute to Williams Grove Speedway, featured April 3rd through October 2nd at the only museum in the world solely dedicated to sprint car racing, the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum in Knoxville, Iowa. We go through this sprint car world and we run across people and we get to meet people. A couple years ago, KKR had their flea market where a lot of the 305 teams, we just talked about the folks at Fremont, they come in. And that night, James McFadden was up there. And of course, it's great for the 305 drivers to be able to pick his brains. Um, we were talking more about beer and important things like that, Obviously. but uh, just to have a chance to get get better acquainted, and it was such a wonderful visit. And then fast forward a couple years, and it seems like every time we turn on Dirt Vision, here's J Max standing on a wing drinking beer out of a shoe. Um, <laughs> it's not every night, but it's really, really rolling well. 
picked up two wins Thursday and Friday night, the prelim nights at the Jackson Nationals, and joins us on the Sage Fruit Hotline. Hello, James. How are you? Good. Thanks for having me on. It is great to talk with you. Um, you have got to feel really good. I mean, this is a tough sport, and you didn't win all three this weekend, but you've got to feel pretty good about where you guys and that Roth Motorsports team are right now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, to Spring Car Racing is a big confidence game, so um, to have the runs we've been having lately uh, is really good. And then, you know, when we do have a bad night, we seem to be bouncing back uh, pretty strong. So, yeah, pumped to get a couple wins there at Jackson and a um, little bit bummed we didn't we didn't win the Saturday night, but, you know, we were up the front and had a shot at it. So that's all you can ask for. And uh, so far it's been a lot of fun for sure. James, you talk about it being a, you know, a confidence game, but there's, there's more to this sport. We all know how hard it is to be up and down the road and on the grind. But when things are going well and you've got the momentum, what is that like having your first back-to-back wins with the World of Outlaws? You talked about how it's, you know, the sport is fickle, but it's got to feel really good. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I think it just, it just puts a pep in the step of, of all, everyone involved in the team. You know, it, it's easier to get up and down the road when you're, when you're winning races and, you know, when you're crashing cars or, or not going well or hitting your head against the wall, not knowing how to fix it or, or go faster, it, it makes the grind even tougher. So when you, when you have some really good results, you, you grab them with both hands and, and try and, you know, use that for motivation. And, um, yeah, like I said, it's, my guys are doing a phenomenal job and it's a lot of fun on the road right now. I can imagine you guys are having a good time because winning will do that and really put everyone in a good spirit. Is there is there an area that you guys have have found some stuff? Is it a lot of little things? Is it just the 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 the, the, the week after week and a little bit here and a little bit here, getting acquainted with the guys? Is there something you can pinpoint that's that's created this the speed that you guys have about every time, or is it just a, a an evolution of your program overall? I think it's a bit of an evolution. Um, obviously there's little things you can pinpoint here and there. And I think uh, when we first got these tires, I, I really wasn't that comfortable um, with them. And uh, we've changed our car around quite a bit, to be honest with you, just getting balance and feel wise and doing stuff that I probably would never have thought you could do to a race car and go around the track. So it, it's, um, it's taken a little bit to get, get us to the spot where I'm, I'm very comfortable 90% of the time. And then I think, We've really worked hard on our qualifying uh, program, sort of trying to get us up to towards the front of the heat races there, and it makes a big difference when you can, you know, you don't have to battle from 10th every night and you start up, up near the front. So just little things, and obviously um, gelling really well with Brent. Uh, my crew chief was new for, you know, the end of last year and this year, and starting to know each other's little, you know, idiosyncrasies and, and uh, what we need from each other. So, it's, yeah, it's, it's fun right now. and it's it's nice having a, a really good relationship and um, we just slowly keep building on it. James, I want to pick your brain a little bit more about the tire issue and, and the discomfort you went through. We talked earlier on the show about how Bobby Allen kind of put out a statement about the tires and how they're making the cars so stuck but on the edge. When you talk about, uh, you know, earlier in the season trying to figure out the tire and it made you really uncomfortable – Without telling us how you you know moved your car around to make it work for you, what what was it like, and how different was it in the beginning when you started this tire? Yeah, I think the whole the whole feeling is different. Um, I could be it just could be me that's thinking this, but the feeling's different. I think your your wheels spin a lot more without really knowing that your wheels spin. Um, you would know from back when you drove when you wheel spin. I felt like the back of the car would stand up, so you knew that you were wheel spinning. When now I, I feel like you know, my car just gets really numb. And the more, like, as it gets number and number, I feel like that's just more wheel spin instead of, you know, it doesn't it doesn't stand up and light the tires up and move around and squirm around like it used to. So you knew you were doing something wrong with the throttle or where you were on the track. Where now I feel like it it really doesn't do much. Um, so you just chase the grip now and, and generally everyone's in that one spot. So it, it's tough to, yeah, tough to get a, a lane going that's a little different than normal. Um, yeah, and I just, early early in the year there, I was struggling with committing to the corner hard. Um, I just didn't feel like I had sort of the right amount of right rear grip on entry. And then when I did, I would fall on my right rear and, and feel like I was going to go outside the ballpark. So um, just getting a, a balance on sort of 
getting me comfortable on entry, but then still being able to, you know, tight enough on entry that you can rotate the car, but then not tight enough that you get into a ledge and, and want to flip over. So I agree with Bobby. I agree with what he's sort of saying. It's, I feel like it's not making the racing as good and it's, it's tougher for a driver to give solid feedback. There's, there was times that this year I would come in, I'm like, man, I forgot how to drive. <laughs> I don't know how to get around the track right now. So um, it's made it interesting. But like I said, we've done stuff to our race car that I would never have thought would work at all. Um, and that's how we've sort of been winning races. So, yeah, it's pretty crazy. It's so interesting. I want to ask you a little bit more about when you talk about the car feeling numb, when you have wheel spin but it doesn't stand up, you don't necessarily feel like you're out of the track. How, I mean, obviously that's where you maybe were struggling and other drivers were like, how do you manage that throttle control if you don't really know you've got the wheel spin? Yeah, I don't know. When you first <laughs> figure that out, let me know. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, it's tough. And, you know, and, then, and then to add a compound that, you know, the Toyota is, is a completely different sounding engine than, than oh. what a Chev predominantly is. So I didn't, I didn't know at the start of the year whether it was, you know, me, the the engine, the tire, the trying to figure all that out. And then you finally just sort of take steps on each program and be like, all right, we've tried that. That didn't work. Let's go to the next one. Um, but yeah, I think the wheel spin thing for me is, is been the biggest adjustment for this year. Like um, I probably, I'm not a big throttle guy. Like I don't use a lot of a lot of throttle like spin the wheels a lot so i've actually been making myself worse by backpedaling um because you know i've been backpedaling at wrong times and wrong situations so yeah i've just changed the way my feet work and and then obviously changed the way our car has you know performed in certain areas of the corner and um yeah really found like that that's helped and then my feedback's gotten better because i've understood you know sort of where i'm where I'm needing to, to keep the tire under me. So, yeah, it's been tough. And I think every night sort of different and every track surface, you know, changes you feel a lot as well. So it's a, it's a never ending battle for sure. <laughs> Boy, I can imagine. And yeah, you, you mentioned it. And I was going to ask, I had my notes to ask the Toyota engine development. Um, are you, are you, you content with that? What's, what's it been like to, to be part of an engine development program? You're an engine builder by trade. That's what you did in Australia before you came over here full time. What's that been like? Are you, are you somewhat hands-on with it? How does that work for you? Yeah, I, I really enjoy um, the, the technical aspect of it. And, you know, I think what Toyota have done in, in the last couple of years has been pretty cool. Um, you know, they've, they really put a lot into it and, and built a really nice motor. We've had some, you know, mechanical um, issues over the past couple, you know, past couple months. And I think we've got a, you know, we've got a good handle on that. Those guys are doing a, a terrific job there. And uh, it's been tough. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It's, it's definitely been tough, you know, understanding it. Like I said, the, the sound and the harmonics in the engine and stuff, the feel of it is a lot different to a Chev. But I really feel like my qualifying has improved um, tenfold from last year to this year. And, um, you know, I, I feel like I go to Knoxville and half miles and places like that, and I, I feel like I can, you know, be in the top sort of five qualifiers, which was something that I could never do. So, um, yeah, I, I, I feel like the engines are, are really good. They're, they're a long way further in front of, um, you know, sort of the, the uh, trying to figure everything out than I thought we were going to be at this time of the year. So that, um, that's a bonus. But, yeah, it's, it's been tough. You know, having two engine builders has been good as well. But it's also tough because, you know, you, you have one that drives a little different than the other one. And with Ryder and Speedway, they, they have different feelings um, in the engines and the way they drive and stumble and take off and do things. So that side of things has been a little tough. But um, I really feel like we've, we've got a handle on both on how to detune both in different ways. and. Um, we've won, you know, with one races with both engine builders. So it's been really good. James, you talk about all the things you've overcome and worked through this season. Obviously, when you're winning, things are really well. But what is the exhaustion level at this point of the season? You know, it, it, everyone it came to everyone's attention when Jacob Allen kind of talked about how hiring and the com competition level is and how tough it is to be on the road. And like I said, I know you're you're running well, so that obviously makes things better. But after Knoxville, you guys have the West Coast grind coming up. What is the what is the level and the emotions um, throughout the pit area for the tour right now? 
Yeah, I think the motivation, um, you know, after Knoxville, your motivation level starts to slow down. Mm -hmm. Um, Getting excited about driving a motorhome across the country isn't that great. (laughs) Um, (laughs) So, yeah, we, uh, you know, you've got to, it's our job. That's what we do, Um, you know, and then winning races obviously helps. But it's definitely a grind this time of the year. You know, we've got some big drives. But for me, this is my favourite time of the year going up to Gadget and hanging out there. And my family's um, coming to Gadget through the California swing. So we haven't seen them all year. Um, Mav gets to hang out with his grandparents, so that's going to be fun. That kind of gets you a little, gets you a little more motivated. Get down the road and um, and see them. But yeah, it's it's definitely a grind. Um, it's honestly it was cool to see Jake do what he did, and you know, and step out of you know the you know the grind and you know mentally how hard this is. And if it's not right, it's you've got to you've got to do something about it. So proud of what Jake did. I think more drivers you might see more drivers do things like that in times um you know even crew guys it's it's tough on everybody so yeah the the outlaw the outlaw deal is definitely a uh a a tough thing for everyone and um i'm just thankful that we're we're running good and you know it sort of makes it a little easier I, I love that you're you're bringing the family over and, and getting some quality time. I think that that's got to be a great breath of fresh air as you work your way through that swing as far as that goes. All right, we got to ask about it. We got to ask how Aaron busted you a little bit about the <laughs> shoey and said you weren't maybe getting everything down. Uh, now I see the NOS Energy Drink shoey is uh, – you picked a heck of a time to introduce that one to the thing. Now that you're winning every other race, um, the shoey game is on point. Everything is all right still? Yeah, yeah, I just – I used the same one for two nights in a row, so that was a bit rough. But um, <laughs> I need to figure out a new program if we're going to win win a couple in a row. I was, um, yeah, yeah. I thought the beer the beer thing was good. It's just hard getting a beer in Victory Lane and it still be cold. So I thought the <laughs> NOS was going to work a little easier, and I'll have a beer, a nice beer out of a can properly when I get back to the trailer. So we're, uh, yeah, I stepped up my program. It's not running down my face as much as what it was. So I think I think we're sort of dialing it in <laughs> yeah see i'm see now i'm with you on that answer totally because i wasn't worried about you and i wasn't worried about the you shoe worried i was about worried about beer. wasting the good beer yeah. and so you saying <laughs> go back and have a beer properly out of the can see now now i can understand i know nothing about numb feeling race cars or spinning tires or anything you know about but beer. A proper beer coming <laughs> out of a can now you're speaking my language we got it covered here. yeah that's why i'd always use a bush light or a bud yeah. light or whatever they yeah. are because they're just ordinary beers so it's just like tip, <laughs> tipping water down on the ground anyway. So if it was a yingling or something nice, I'd, I would savor it. My <laughs> man, now, now he's preaching. Now I like I'm in. It. Now I'm, I'm, I'm in the choir. I'm in the choir singing hallelujah. That is awesome. <laughs> that is fantastic. James, we always appreciate the visit. We love the success you're having. Thanks for joining us here on Wing Nation. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it, guys. There we go. J Mac. Joining us here on Wing Nation. Wow. What a cool, cool story <laughs> Such he is. Such a cool story. Such a cool story. What Such a good, a good guy. Yeah. My gosh. Good things happening to good people. And boy, he's one of the best. Yep. That is fantastic. Stay with us. Danny Vera, New York State Hot Shoe All-Star winner. He joins us next. The Outlaws are headed back to the Pacific Northwest. Join us for three action-packed nights of racing August 31st, September 1st and 2nd at Skagit Speedway when the World of Outlaw NOS Energy Drink Sprint Cars return for the Sage Fruit Skagit Nationals. Kickoff for the Sage Fruit Skagit Nationals begins Wednesday, August 30th with a pre-race party, live band, Sage Fruit Apple giveaways, and more. Then catch Donnie Shots and the rest of the World of Outlaws as they take on Washington's best sprint car drivers Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights. Details at SkagitSpeedway.com. The National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum's newest exhibit will be our track tribute to Williams Grove Speedway inside the museum's main floor from April 3rd through October 2nd this year. You'll learn about the beginning of Williams Grove Speedway and the evolution of sprint car racing on the East Coast through eight of the iconic big cars and sprint cars that made up the history of Mechanic Birds Pennsylvania's Williams Grove Speedway. Plus, you'll see videos of historic national open sprint car races and other racing events that put Williams Grove on the map. That's the track tribute to Williams Grove Speedway, featured April 3rd through October 2nd at the only museum in the world solely dedicated to sprint car racing, the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum in Knoxville, Iowa. Saturday night is what I love 
about 410 sprint car racing. Because just when we think we got this thing figured out, <laughs> you know, when you look at the All-Stars, Sunshine's back. So Sunshine, Zeb, we'll see what they can do head-to-head. Danny Varens up there in New York, runs with the Empire Super Sprints, one's, one's a modified as well, and says, well, Sunshine, Zeb, you do whatever you want to do, but you're going to do it behind me and goes out and wins. Um, I just think that's awesome. I love, that's what I love about 410 Sprint Car Racing and where we're at. And joining us on the Sage Fruit Outline is that race winner from Saturday night up at New Utica Realm. Danny Varen joins us. Hello, Danny. How are you? I'm doing great. I appreciate you having, having me on. It is great to catch up with you. What has the reaction been between friends, family, <laughs> folks in the sport? What's the reaction been since Saturday night? Uh, it's been good. I tell you, um, you know, a lot of phone calls at work and, uh, the phone blew up pretty good that night. Um, you know, uh, you know, and all the supporters of, uh, of us have been calling in and, and, you know, and I don't know, people I haven't even talked to in, uh, yeah, I don't know, probably five years have been calling me. So, um, it was pretty good. Danny, you led every lap of that race, but talk about like the second half or when you got into lap traffic, I mean, Leading any race and not knowing where to go and what line to pick is difficult. But what was that like knowing you had people like Tyler Courtney right down, right behind you, catching up to you? Yeah, I uh, uh, early on um, felt pretty good getting through lap traffic and you know picking our lines, and then uh, halfway through the race, the the momentum changed to where the bottom started to come in pretty good, and, and we just had to move down. Um, I'd say probably probably the last six laps i was really getting worried uh i couldn't get through lap traffic they were kind of where i wanted to be and then i just caught them at different areas so i was, I was getting a little worried there at the end because i knew my pace dropped off uh just because uh i couldn't run where i wanted to and it was kind of you know kind of killing my momentum really danny how was the uh you, you've won at utica realm earlier this year you've ran there a lot as well was the track comparable was was it something you were as comfortable as we could ever be with a dirt track was it was it something you felt comfortable or familiar with a little bit yeah uh i was uh that track is it grooms up so 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 awesome um you know it gives you a top groove it gives you a bottom groove and and they both came in the part the other night um and i was really comfortable even in the car um you know the super comfortable which i don't think we've really had in the 410 as of lately um and uh you know, just it makes a huge difference when you're comfortable. Danny, you ran super well with the World of Outlaws at Weedsport a few weeks back. How important or how much of an advantage is it to have that that home court advantage of it being in upstate New York, the tracks that you've run in sprint cars and modifieds, to know the nuances of the track and how it might change during the night? Yeah, I think it's key with these guys, uh, with the you know, with the All Stars or the World of Outlaws. Um, you know, they have the upper edge when it comes to racing four tens. Um, you know, every weekend or, or three nights a week, and we don't. Um, so you kind of need to have something. Otherwise, uh, you know, they're going to mop you up pretty good. Yeah, no doubt about it. Well, I think this was – I think this might have been the third 410 race, at least the stats I saw with it. What's what's the unique challenge that you find when, when, you, when you go to a 410? You run a fair amount of 360 races, run a lot of modified races. Obviously, the modified is very different. But what are some of the things you're conscious of with the 410 that you're like, I got to make sure I'm not doing what the 360 does or, or vice versa. Yeah, it's, it's really the, the speed. Um, so when you, you're entering the corner so much faster, so just to slow your, your arms down and, uh, and your brain down, um, you know, because we're probably, I don't know, two or three, I'm probably two seconds quicker with the 410 around Utica. So, um, it's just that timing thing, you know, where you think that you're going to, you're on the cushion, um, but when you turn, you're up and over the cushion because you you uh, you know you're, you're entering harder and faster than you would with the 360. Um, but uh, you know, I'd say the last two times out with the 410, um, our program's really changed and it's made me super comfortable. So um, you know, I'm just uh, I don't know so much more relaxed because of how good the car is. I don't have to fight nothing. I can just uh, you know just just try to drive it and, and not make mistakes. That certainly helps. Danny, I got to know your dad, Bobby, years ago. Gosh, probably 20 years ago or so now. I uh, hopped in one of his modifies one time at Fonda. But I know you two are really close. You work together. What was your dad's reaction seeing you win a, an all-star feature like that? Uh, he wasn't there, but he uh, he called me um, the next morning, and, and he was super pumped and, uh, you know, really proud. Uh, he said that's something he's never accomplished was winning a, a, 
a national event like that. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, we are super close. I mean, we're, uh, you know, uh, business owners together and, and although we fight, um, you know, we still have a real tight relationship. I love that. I really do. As a former modified guy writer for Gator Racing News, I remember some of your dad's races <laughs> yeah. as well. And uh, that is that is that is really really awesome for sure. Danny, what's your what what? How does your program work? You got modified. You got three sixties, and then you sprinkle in a couple four tens. Like how many modified races? What's your three sixty schedule like? Other four ten races? What's that? How do how do you put that all together? Um, so the priority, uh, and especially where we are in, in New York, um, with 360 stuff, um, you know, there's about, I'd say probably they have a, a, the ESS runs about 30 shows a year. Um, we do a probably, probably about 20 of those shows, um, close to home. Um, and then any, any 410 stuff that comes to, uh, New York, um, we're almost a definite, definite to be there. Uh, and then the modified stuff is if I, if there is no sprint car race, um, and there's no 410 race that's uh, nearby, we're going to hop in the modified and go run that too. Danny, I know the family business is the number one priority, but after a win with the all-stars, is it tempting to make some trips down to Pennsylvania? Yeah, we talked about, we were talking about before, um, you know, we want to get down there, um, and, uh, do some stuff. Um, you know, it's just hard to drive by Fonda that, uh, a mile from the house uh, to all the way to Port Royal, six hours away, and and justify it, you yeah. know, um, you know when when you're paying it out of your own pocket. So it's just it's just one of the things where I that's where I want to be. I I, I want to be doing the four ten stuff more. Um, just the opportunity uh, just really hasn't brought itself to light yet. Yeah, are you are you as as you look at the balance of this season? Are there uh, and you talked about you'd like to go do stuff. Are there are there some things that are looking like you might do some sprint car racing, more sprint car racing, more four ten racing, or you you just think that the way this year is playing out with the dollars and cents, you're probably sticking to the, to the game plan. Uh, I think we're going to stick to the game plan for the most part, um, but uh, we we will be down at Port Royal before the end of the season. Uh, we just haven't picked a date, um, you know, and we'll you know see what we can and see what we can do. I definitely feel like. You know, ever since the World Outlaw Race at Weedsport, we we learned so much, um, you know, chassis wise and car setup wise, uh, and that's really what helped us to, at the Utica. Um, so we really want to venture out and try that somewhere else. You mentioned Port Royal twice. Is it is just the, 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 you like the you like the looks of that? You've done something that what what's there about Port Royal that's got your interest? Uh, it kind of gets a little slick, um, and mm. uh, we've been there before. Um, and they also race on Saturdays, so it's kind yeah. of a yeah. you know Fridays. I, I I can't get away for Fridays, um, and uh, you know um, some of the other racetracks I've never been to before. So it's just uh, yeah. you know just one of them things, um, you know where we've been there before. We've uh, almost had top five at, at Port Royal before, so it'd be nice to go down there and and, and try to get a top five. Man, I tell you, it's awesome stuff. It really is. I love stories like that, and love seeing racing families continue on the tradition as you have from your father. Congratulations on the win on uh, Saturday night up there at Utica Rome, and uh, hopefully we get to see you more in some sprint cars, uh, 410 sprint cars. We'll follow along, of course, with Empire Super Sprints and the other 360 racing, but thanks for joining us here on Wing Nation. All right, I appreciate it. Thank you. There we go. Danny Varon joining us. Yeah, and the Varon family, that's one mm -hmm. of those big names up in upstate yep. New York racing. His dad, Bobby, raced for years and years, and I love that. I really do. Yeah, gotten his modified once at Fonda, and I have I I wasn't too good in that modified. <laughs> you didn't put After it in the we, drink, did you? No, you kept it no, out of I the didn't. Mohawk make, River, I, did I kept you? it out of the Mohawk River. Well, if you go to yeah. Fonda and run and keep it out of the Mohawk yeah. River, you did all right. Gosh, I love that racetrack. That is wild. It isn't is a it? great track. It really is. Gosh, upstate New York. I have got. I had one. I had one time. Um, we we you know the way my year goes is we plug the NASCAR MRN stuff goes first, and then I look at the way things work out. I know what year it is now, as a matter of fact. It was 2020. Oof. Yeah, exactly. Year. My plan was this. On Wednesday of July 4th weekend, because uh, Indy was July 4th, I was going to go up, and I was going to go Central New York Speed Week, Central New York Speed Week, Wednesday, Thursday, Williams Grove Friday, because that's Pennsylvania Speed Week, yep. Port Royal Saturday, Utica Rome Sunday and fly out on Monday morning. Oof. 
I was ready to go. I was pumped about that because I want to get back to some of my New York State tracks yeah. where I covered. I never covered sprint cars there. I covered modifieds, and I had that all locked in. And then this worldwide pandemic come <laughs> and just shut it out. And now with with Road America and recently Chicago, we race on the Fourth of July, yeah. which is when they do their Speed Week up there with Empire Super Sprints. And I, I just love. I love what that, I, I've shared this before. I've shared this before. What Empire Super Sprints have grown into, I was there for the first year, and it was not pretty. It was uh, extra spin and stops uh, was one of the nicknames <laughs> and everything else. And you had, and it was a bunch of modified guys going sprint car racing. And the biggest problem is, is you have a track with one push yeah. truck. Yeah. You know, they have got that They had thing. a great year in 2002, though. They had a great year in 2002, did they? Yeah. Yeah. Because the year I ran with them. That's right. Exactly. Oh, they're play- they were just bustling at the seams. Exactly. Uh, uh, but what that's, the the, the M- extra spin and yeah. stops, are th- that went away a long, long yeah. time ago. That is a great a series of great series. racers. It, it really, really is. truly is. I love what they're doing up there in New York State. Yep. Good stuff. Danny Barron, great stuff as well. Stay with us. More Wing Nation in just a moment. The Outlaws are headed back to the Pacific Northwest. Join us for three action-packed nights of racing August 31st, September 1st, and 2nd at Skagit Speedway when the world of Outlaw NOS Energy Drink Sprint Cars return for the Sage Fruit Skagit Nationals. Kickoff for the Sage Fruit Skagit Nationals begins Wednesday, August 30th with a pre-race party, live band, Sage Fruit Apple giveaways, and more. Then catch Donnie Shots and the rest of the world of Outlaws as they take on Washington's best sprint car drivers Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Saturday night's details at SkagitSpeedway.com. It is Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit carrying on. We had a great, great visit. Man, I love talking to James McFadden and with Danny Varon. Wow. Yeah. Good stuff, that's for sure. National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum birthday calendar. Uh, later this week, Jerry Scratch Daniels, Roger McCluskey, uh, James Billy Wynn. Yesterday, Clyde Adams. And yesterday would have been the birthday of 1999 inductee Bob Kinzer. I love this. 1954, no racing experience. Bought a 36 flathead Ford Coupe, found an Army tank helmet, and went and started racing. In the late 50s, he won his first track championship at Columbus, Indiana. Also in the late 50s, started running super modifieds and 29 track championships and more than 400 wins later. It was a heck of a career. Uh, Passed away uh, years ago, uh, Bob Kinzer. But he is a 1999 inductee into the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame. That is good stuff. Mm -hmm. Love that. Really do. Uh, You can become a supporter of the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame Museum. It's only $25. So do that. Uh, Just just support that play. That is so great. All right. Speaking of Knoxville, Iowa, which is where the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame is. Aaron, (laughs) we're here. We're here. I feel like the season just started. Like. I know. Like Florida just started. Right. Yeah, Volusia, Florida yeah. in February. Knoxville Raceway, Saturday night, their season championship. Oof. Austin McCarl is in good shape with the points. This would be a second Knoxville championship. He won it in 2018. But, boy, we talk about this with the Nationals, and then we just get to this mess. You know, I mean, and, and we know, we understand Knoxville. Ah, Knoxville has the setup. And it works for them in Knoxville, Iowa. And we all understand that this week before Labor Day, they're done. The sprint yep. cars. They'll have their late model nationals and um, might be something else High on the calendar. High school football. High school football. It's just, well, in college football in Iowa. Yeah, you know, huge. The Hawkeyes and everything out there. It's just, they're done. And they won't be the last one that's done. We're getting to that the time of year. Beginning of the end. The beginning of the end, exactly. Um, they're still paying a bunch of money in Pennsylvania, Williams Grove. Uh, 8000 to win the Jack Gun Memorial. Lincoln has the $7,300 Kramer cash. Where are the outlaws that, Aaron? The outlaws are headed up to one of my favorite race tracks. Ooh. And to visit our friend Mark Dobmeyer. Exactly. River City Speedway on Friday, and they go up to North Dakota, Red River Valley on Saturday. I'm telling you what, Friday night, I'm going to pop up a bash of popcorn <laughs> and watch that place. I love that race That is a I great do. racetrack up there. The All-Stars are in Michigan, Tri-City on Friday night, and the Butler Battlegrounds. <laughs> And I am just, I'm pumped to see what happens up there at Butler yeah. because it is a track that has a long and storied history. Uh, some of the history, a little rough around the edges and the folks running it are really putting the effort and energy yep. into it. And it'd be good to see them showcase their place on Saturday night with the All-Stars. The, the Butler Battlegrounds. 
man, they've got it going on up there. So um, I love that. I really do. And I love that the All-Stars are back there um, to, 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 to mix it up with the locals up there in the state of Michigan. So um, mentioned this earlier, Carson Macedo. Boy, I'm telling you what, uh, we had James McFadden breaking things down really, really well. Carson Macedo broke things down from his perspective really well. That is on our Wing Nation, presented by Sage Fruit Television Show in Canada, Rev TV, Wednesday night at 8.30, uh, here in the States, Mav TV, Friday at 12.30. Carson was spectacular. He was just was, he was wonderful. He's a good, he's a good splainer of things. He Splainer. explained things really, really well. You can get Wing Nation gear at shopwingnation.com. We might just as well go here, Aaron. It's August. You can go to shopwingnation.com and get your Christmas oh, shopping. Oh, no. We might as well go here. Hey, Knoxville's going to shut the season Stop. down. No, no, no. Seriously. No, no, no. no, 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 no. You'll get it done. No, I'm doing you a favor here, folks. Just no, settle you're, down. You're you. rushing. Settle me. down. Settle down, Craig. Settle down, Aaron. It's August. Settle down. <laughs> I'm doing our viewers and listeners a favor because they can get the done now. And they don't have to worry about that Black Friday mess. They can uh, just laugh at everyone being idiots when everyone else does it. They're ahead of the curve by doing this. I Do know. it now. Get it now. Just get it now. I'm not. I'm not saying let's put out the. Let's. Well, I'm my not daughter saying, wanted to start decorating no, for Halloween. I'm yesterday. not setting up Chris. I'm not saying Christmas carols and everything like that. I'm saying this one aspect of it. If you've got a sprint car fan in your world, knock it out. Knock it out so that everyone else is losing their mind. I, see, I can't do that. If I buy something, I, I'm not waiting a few months to give it to them. Like, oh, here it is. I'm not good about that. I feel like we're a big box store now. You know, we need to set out the display, get the Christmas no, trees out. No, we don't up. have to do the any of that. The trees. Just go buy yeah, your dang go shirt and tuck it Go buy your dang shirt and tuck it <laughs> away from the holidays. Santa Claus. Yep. No, geez, yep. you guys took this way, way, way where it doesn't need to go. I'm trying to help the peoples. I'm the trying peoples. to help everybody. I'm saying get get one person off your list right now so that you can say, well, we got we got Jim taken care of back in August, postman with some wisdom. Or I would lose again. Despite, the oh. despite what Craiger and Aaron said, I listened to Postman and I got that holiday shopping for Jim done. Well, Steve Mart over here. But yeah, seriously, so thoughtful. But I also have done the old. <laughs> Put it, I'm going to hide it. And well, now, there's that. Remember where I hid it. Don't forget about that. And yeah, then a year later, I'm like, oh, yeah. this you was You find it in June. Thing. That was Jim's shirt. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then you just give it to him at the holiday, uh, the, 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 the July 4th party. So yeah. then you're fighting Black Friday anyways because you uh, can't find the stupid T-shirt well, that you bought. Exactly. Uh, so don't fight Black Friday. Go to ShopWingNation.com <laughs> or Justin Peck's merchandise trailer, wherever he's racing at. And Lord knows he's racing somewhere because they ain't as scared to go racing. No. Uh, so there you go. All right. So, <laughs> well, I think now that we've had that discussion. Merry we need Christmas. Just, Mary, yes, exactly. Merry Christmas, everyone. <laughs> well, no, Knoxville's done. What's next? When Knoxville's done, what's next? Seriously. What's next? What do we got? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, then seriously. we start talking points. And we'll, world yeah, finals. We'll start, yeah, exactly. We got world finals coming yep, up. No world doubt. Finals. It's all good. It's I all did good. go over to the Charlotte Dirt Track this weekend to watch the monster trucks. Did you really? How oh, was that? Yeah. It was actually kind of awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I, you know, once you're a little redneck, you're always a bit redneck. I did PA over there. The the single most fun I've ever had doing PA was the Monster Trucks it was, in Charlotte. It was honestly we, exceeded expectations. Because when I do PA, like, I'm one of those annoying carnival barker announcers. Yeah. Like some people, well, that's some, what you need at this. No. Yeah, yeah, some people like, no, some people, uh, no, and, and I understand that. Some people don't like what I do, and some people love yeah, what I do. Yeah, but Monster Trucks Monster Trucks. That's your I'm people. on the flag stand, and we're the um, ACD song, I Want to Rock and Roll All yeah. Night and Party Every Day. We've got everyone in the stands doing an air guitar <laughs> contest, screaming and hollering, beers flying all over the place. I'm standing uh, there saying, I might be the luckiest guy in the world yeah. right now. Because this. I've never been like a rock star, but this it was what it was like. That, was your that, moment. Night, that night, the place was going wild, and <laughs> trucks are flying through the air. Kate, and, we could not get Kate to leave. She was begging us to stay for the last freestyle, whatever. Yeah. Oh, it was hilarious. Monster trucks are bombers. <laughs> and like I said, to be the Carnival Barker style announcer, yeah, that's, that's like a little bit of heaven right there. I couldn't handle it regularly because I'd vapor lock or seize up. But I'm telling you, that that yeah. is the single most fun, and I have a blast. I yeah. do the indoor racing. It I was... do summer shootout. I do Millbridge. Those are oh, and the school and bus are, race was a highlight. School bus too. race. Oh yeah. Well, well, boy, the school bus race at the end of the summer shootout. Oh, is when that when they, they went into stuffed, the pit area? Yeah, they stuffed one. In, yeah, when <laughs> the idiots from Track House Racing decided to have a company party and let crew guys do the school bus race, about dump uh... poor old Justin Marks out of the ballpark, and we don't even have a ballpark there. And they had him. They Gosh. had him just about upside down in a bus. And this guy put it in there. I've been. I've been a Charlotte Motor Speedway. This was the 27th year, and I've never seen a bus race like that. 
I am telling you, when that bus went headfirst into that pit yeah, wall, we did not know what was coming next. And the place was going nuts. <laughs> I mean, uh, wild stuff, uh, wild stuff. So there you go, monster truck stuff. Yeah, I yeah. liked it. I'll be back. Oh, I, 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 I can tell you. Yeah, that, that's oh, good and their stuff. trophy was huge. I actually told Greg Walters from the yeah. Speedway, I'm like, you know what? I might need to come out of retirement. Oh, oh, no, oh, Greg. oh, you're in trouble by Actually, telling Greg Walters Actually, the school bus that. race had the giant trophy, you're, too. I'm like, you, I like trophies. You're in trouble because I know Greg Walters. You're, <laughs> you're in tr- Greg Walters, one of the finest he men really the good is. Lord has put on this earth. He's the, the president over at Charlotte Motor Speedway. He <laughs> is just one of the finest guys, uh, but he'll remember that oh, conversation. Oh, yeah, that'll come back. You're in trouble. You're in trouble. Maybe All not. Right. We need to get out of here now. We've gone. We see that we got ourselves out of the Christmas Christmas discussion. Christmas to monster trucks. Christmas to monster trucks. Exactly. So we got a little bit of everything from (laughs) soup to nuts here on Wing Nation. We got it all. Thank you to Danny Varon. Thank you to James McFadden. More important than all of that, thank you for joining us here on Wing Nation, (laughs) presented by Sage Fruit.